welcome back to Monink. If you guys are new here, then what's up? My name is Erica. Hey, how you doing? And if you're into the history of the ancient Greeks and the Romans, if you're into updating it into pop culture so that you can figure out why you should care about it today, then this is the place for you. You're going to want to hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so that you know every single time I post. Now, today I'm starting a whole new series on the channel because I've been getting a lot of questions about all of the mythological and real ladies that we have from the ancient world. So this series will just be focusing on them. And the first episode had to be given to the queen of the underworld herself, Persephone. So Persephone is famous for being the queen of the underworld, as I just said, that is literally, literally guys, that's her claim to fame, okay? So Persephone is queen of the underworld and that's her name in Greece, okay? But her name in Rome is Proserpina. It's very, very similar. You could probably have guessed it if you saw it, but I should just really highlight that, that her name does change, but it's incredibly similar. Now, I have said this a number of times on the channel, the reason why I think at least that people love Persephone's myth so much is because there's literally one. The bitch has one myth, and if you know the one myth, you basically know everything about Persephone. In saying that, she does pop up in mythology in a bunch of places, but she pops up in other people's myths with Hades, okay? So whenever somebody has to go into the underworld, they will oftentimes go to the palace of Hades and Persephone and like have a little chit chat, have some tea, you know, hang out. That's when we see them. But this is really her myth. And her myth is the original like trauma story, okay? Like this myth is dark, okay? I don't want anyone coming into this episode thinking like Persephone's the goddess of spring and her myth centers around the abduction and, oh, I was gonna say a word that I can't say on YouTube. Shall we say sexual trauma? That's a good one, go me. The sexual trauma that is caused by the king of the underworld himself. So Hades is the one who abducts her and inflicts said sexual trauma uh, on her. And that's what her myth is centered around, okay? That's how dark this thing is. So trigger warning is now, okay? If you get triggered by those things, don't keep watching because it's it gets dark. It's not pretty, okay? And this isn't even like with Zeus's myths where they are kind of funny because he'll like be a swan or something or like a rain of gold, you know? like. He does weird things like Hades literally just picks Persephone up and she's screaming and crying and he doesn't care. So <laughs> it's really, I'm laughing, but it's more like nervous laughter as in like, oh, I don't know how to present this to people who might not know it. <laughs> Get ready, put your seatbelts on, buckle up, let's go. There are two versions of this myth. It's one myth, but there are two versions. There's a version that exists in Greece and there's a version that exists in Rome. So we'll start with the Greek one. My hair is a mess, holy crap. We'll start with the Greek one though, and then we'll go into the Roman one, just because the Greek one is, is a more well-known version. Uh, so we'll go with that. So let's start there. So where we hear the myth in Greece is in this thing called the Hymn to Demeter. And uh, you might be wondering, well, what is that? Now, basically there are a bunch of hymns that were dedicated to certain gods. They are called the Homeric hymns. And that is not because necessarily that Homer wrote them. They actually, we don't know who wrote them, but they are in the exact same style as uh, Homer's writing from the Iliad and the Odyssey about the Trojan War. And because they mirror that style nearly exactly, uh, we think that he probably wrote them too. So they're called the Homeric myths. Only a couple survive. Originally, we think there was one to every god. A few of them survive. One of them is the hymn to Demeter, and thank God, because that is where this myth is. So in that version of the myth, the first thing to point out is that Persephone is described as slim angled. I just think that that's a really... <laughs> A really funny description of her. But either way, she is, is very young. She's stressed as being young uh, and she is out in the field with her pals. All her mates are like, let's go down to the field and have a good time. So they all go and they're picking flowers and uh, Persephone is just like lured in by this narcissus flower that it's really beautiful, it smells really nice, all this kind of jazz. And so she plucks it, little does she know this is literally like the, the key to the underworld. And as she plucks it, the ground opens up really dramatic. The ground opens up, this chariot appears, and the god of the underworld is on it, and he just picks up Persephone and just takes her. Like, literally, it's one movement, guys. Like, flower comes up, chariot, Persephone, gone, okay? And before you, like, hate Hades for doing this, because, like, excuse you, you can't just <laughs> pick women up. Like, that's just not allowed. Uh, before you hate him, that actually, prior to this, Zeus is actually the one who who orchestrated this whole thing. So we have him to blame for the myth. That basically Hades had gone to him prior to this moment and had been like, look, the underworld's kind of lonely because everyone's dead. So, um, you know, can I have like a queen? That would be great. And Zeus is like, oh my God, funny you should say that. I have a daughter who's like totally just chilling out and is like super young and is not claimed by anybody. So now she's yours. But the thing is, is that Zeus tells Hades, like you can't tell Demeter, who's the woman that he had the child with and also his sister subsequently. Um, but he's like, you can't tell Demeter because she's going to freak the 
out. So we really have to just keep this between the two of us. I say you can go do it, have fun. And that is why Hades then has the Narcissus flower pop up from the ground. Persephone picks it and then he just picks her up. And as he picks her up, this is important, <laughs> Persephone screams and cries the whole time. She is screaming. And the only thing that keeps her somewhat calm from like flailing her arms and everything is the idea that, that hopefully at some point she'll see her mom again. Like that's the only thing that keeps her calm. Now, in my opinion, there's then quite a funny moment that then happens because as Persephone is being like brought back into the underworld, she's still screaming, she's crying. We then get this weird cut of Zeus, who's like just chilling in like a shrine to himself, accepting sacrifices from mortals. But it's just like such, such a weird scene that <laughs> you're reading it and you're like, why? Why are you there? Like, did you not even want to hear your child screaming that you were like, you know what, I'm just gonna go and like celebrate me for a hot second. I need some me time with the mortals. To me, it's just such an odd comparison, but that happens. We then cut to Demeter and Demeter has heard like the echoes of the scream. So she knows that Persephone is somewhere and she is not happy. So she's trying to figure out where the hell Persephone is and she's looking for nine days. Okay, Demeter is running around for nine days trying to find her daughter. And on the 10th day, Hecate just shows up. She's the goddess of witchcraft. She shows up and she's like, hey, I totally heard that too. Oh, you're looking for Persephone. That's who it was who screamed. Cool, I'll help. And literally you're reading it and you're like, what the fuck were you for the last like nine days? Like Demeter wasn't being quiet about her search and yet, Hecate decides that nine days into it, she's going to be like, oh yeah, by the way, I, I I know what happened. Like, where were you day one? So the two of them decide to go to the Titan God Helios, who's the God of the sun. So he literally exists where the sun is and he pulls the sun, that, that, that's what he does, okay? So they go to Helios and they're like, hey, you're the God of the sun. And this happened during the day. Did you see anything? And Helios is like, oh my God, you guys came to the right place. I totally saw what happened. This is 10 days into the search, guys, okay? <laughs> this could have happened day one, but either way. Helios then tells them what he saw, which is that Hades pops up. He then brought her down to the underworld and Demeter is not happy. Okay, she is so mad, but she can't go into the underworld, okay? She's not allowed down there. So she's so mad that she decides no seed is allowed to grow in the mortal world. She's like, I'm upset, everybody's gonna starve. And so obviously Zeus being the king of the gods is like, well, that's, that's not how this works. Uh, no, okay, we need to keep the mortals alive. That's literally our job. So he sends down the goddess Iris, who's the goddess of the uh, rainbow. He sends down Iris to go and talk some sense into Demeter. And Demeter hears none of it. She's like, no, you're all heads. I just want my daughter back. That's literally it. All I want is Persephone back with me. So Iris relays this to uh, Zeus and Zeus is like, all right, fine. So he sends Hermes, the messenger god, down to the underworld to go and talk to Hades. And he's like, look, big man, Zeus isn't happy because Demeter is starving all the mortals and you know, we kind of need them so that they can worship us, right? Like we're only here because of them and, and this won't be any fun without any mortals to tell us how great we are. So you need to send Persephone back. Hades hears this and he's like, you know what, actually, this is a pretty good idea. And so he turns to Persephone and you, honestly, in the moment, you're like, oh my God, wait, Hades, defining feature, this is great. He's like, look, hon, it would actually benefit us all if you go and say hi to your mom, like just go and do that. And then, you know, you are my queen. So like, I, I would like to see you again, but you should go and do this for your mom. You should go and do this for the mortals. This is a good idea. And uh, as he's doing this, he's like, but wait, hold up, before you leave, you're gonna wanna take some, some snacks for the road. So have seven pomegranate seeds. I think it's seven. It's some number of pomegranate seeds. Have them, eat them, you won't be so hungry. And so Persephone's like, okay, cool. And so she, as she's leaving the underworld, she eats pomegranate seeds and uh, she shows up in the mortal world. She then sees Demeter and Demeter's like, hey, please tell me you didn't eat anything down there because we all know the rules is that you will be stuck there if you eat anything. And Persephone's like, ow. Oh. I didn't know these rules. Demeter is still not happy. So she then goes to Zeus and she's like, you have to sort this shit out because this is your child and you caused this by, by doing this thing with Hades. Like this is now your problem, okay? You need to sort this out. So Zeus is then the one who comes up with the compromise uh, and he's like, okay, you can, you know, stay in the underworld for like four months out of the year and then whatever. Because if you eat anything in the underworld, you get stuck there and that's exactly what happened to Persephone. But it was because of Hades in this myth. Hades is the one who trapped her. It's completely out of Persephone's control. She didn't want to be down there. She screams, she cries, and she hates Hades. Let's highlight that. In the Greek version, she hates Hades. She also hates Hades in the Roman version, but for different reasons. So just so that you know, for this half of the video, we will be switching into Roman names. So whenever I say when I will be clarifying it, but we will be switching just so that you guys know the different places. So the myth of Proserpina and Pluto, Persephone and Hades, in Rome is actually 
not done by Zeus. So Zeus or Jupiter in ancient Rome, Jupiter actually had no say in this whole Proserpina going missing thing. And that actually the person who orchestrated it was Venus, who is Aphrodite in Rome. So she and her son Cupid, they are the gods of love and lust, right? And one day Venus is just hanging out and she's like, yo, we have two virgin goddesses among us and I'm not happy about that because if we have one more, I'm basically out of business. I'm paraphrasing obviously, but that's essentially the conversation that she has with her son that she's like, we're not needed if there were all these virgins. So we need to stop Proserpina, who's the youngest goddess. We need to stop Proserpina from being influenced by that. Um, so uh, we, we're gonna have to step in, okay? Now the only god who wasn't in, romantically involved at that point was Pluto. So Venus tells her son Cupid, you need to shoot Pluto with an arrow so that he'll fall in love with Proserpina. And so he's like, okay, because he's his mom's little bitch basically. And Cupid does everything that Venus tells him to do. So he goes down, he shoots Pluto, Pluto turns around, sees Pluto. Proserpina and the same thing happens where he comes up from the ground with his chariot and then he puts her in the chariot and she screams and as they're going instead of her scream echoing so that Ceres who's Demeter uh, so that Ceres can hear it that part doesn't happen in the Roman version but instead this like random nymph sees what happens uh, but she's like so in pain by seeing that Proserpina's in pain that she like you know sort of just like morphs into like a river because she's like upset right? And then Ceres notices that Proserpina's disappeared. Same thing happens where she goes on a search. Hecate does not play a role in this myth, uh, but she goes on a search. Ceres is running around and she ends up coming into contact with this nymph being like, oh, you probably know something. And the nymph is like, I do know something. And so she's the one who tells Ceres what happens as opposed to Helios, this random nymph, um, who then, by the way, after this, then just goes back to being a river. It's, it's a little bit weird, but <laughs> this is Roman mythology for you, okay? So the same sort of thing happens here where the messenger god Mercury, who's Hermes, he goes down into the underworld uh, and he, you know, hollers at Proserpina and is like, your mom's not happy, so <laughs> you should probably go and see her. And uh, she then, they get reunited. And Proserpina actually just ended up getting hungry. There was no sort of uh, Pluto involvement where he gave her the seeds. She had just eaten pomegranate seeds down there. Uh, and that's what caused her to be stuck down there. Which, you know, Ceres finds out and Ceres is like, uh -huh, um, excuse me? The fates will not have that. It has nothing to do with Pluto in this myth. So they go to Jupiter, the king, Zeus, they go to Jupiter and they're like, you need to sort this out. And he's like, what am I supposed to do with the fact that she ate food down there? Like, I, I have no power over that, I can't do anything. And so he ends up coming up with the compromise with the fates, not with Pluto. Uh, it, it's actually done with the fates because even Pluto is subject to the fates. And so they then end up coming up with the compromise. Um, that Proserpina can spend X amount of time in the upper world and X amount of time in the underworld, which is usually, just so you guys know, it changes. That period of time changes and sometimes it's half the year and sometimes it's a third of the year that she spends in the underworld. Um, and sometimes it's a third, two thirds of the year that she spends in the upper world. It really depends on the, the myth that you read. It depends on the version that you read. Um, that changes across all history. But that's Persephone's myth. It's really dark. It's the one myth, okay? We're not gonna sit here and go through like a timeline of when Persephone or Proserpina pops up because then after that, it's just whenever people came down to the underworld, they went to go and say hi to her. And so you have like, oh, you know, then they sat in front of Proserpina's throne or Persephone's throne. And you're like, oh, there she is. But aside from that, she hates, hates the underworld, hates it. Anytime we see her, she is either like crying. She's a good queen. She's a very good queen. And authors give her, you know, that credit as well. She's a very good queen of the underworld. She does her job really well, but she does not like her husband. And everybody likes to say, oh, well, you know, like Hades didn't cheat on her and all that kind of jazz. It wasn't really in his character. He had done such an awful thing to her that if you were going to add a cheating onto that character, there would be no way of bringing Hades or Pluto back. Like you just couldn't, you couldn't do that. Like, like Zeus or Jupiter, he cheats on his wife the entire time, but he's like, it's, it's just, that's who he is. Like that's part of his character. He also does not abduct his wife or anything like that. Well, he had two wives, but still. He doesn't do that awful thing to begin with. Like even in ancient times, what Hades or Pluto did was horrendous. It was awful. And so because of that, you can't then have him being a cheater on top of that. It's just, once again, no redeeming qualities then. But that is her myth. So that hopefully, um, that gave you a better a better idea of, of what exactly Proserpina and Persephone is, uh, and who she is, uh, what her characteristics are, even though she is miserable and she hates the underworld and her and Hades are certainly not in love. Mm -mm. That is a nice 
a nice modern retelling of this myth because it is just so goddamn awful. So thank you guys for tuning in there. If you guys want to know these sources that I use for this episode, we do post them online uh, on my website. So you guys can go check that out in the description below. I also have links to the books in the description below as well as on the website where I just basically write up these episodes like an essay so you guys can read it. Don't plagiarize it because I saw someone do that the other day on an Instagram post and I was like, I wrote that. Either way. So thank you guys for tuning into this episode. If you guys enjoyed it, then please, please hit that like button so that I know. And don't forget that next week we'll be continuing our whole series on incredible women in the ancient world, uh, which do include both mythological women and real women in real time. So thank you guys so much and we'll be seeing you next time. Yeah.